Welcome to Biz Dev Live. I am so, so excited to bring Speaker Sue to you today. She has made an impact on my life. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. You're here. We're excited for you. I'll be right back after the Biz Dev theme. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. time. Biz D with C, C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. This is business development, not even selling it. This is intelligent. If you watch it, I promise you benefit. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz D with C, C. brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. Sue Hershkowitz Core, Speaker Sue, is the founder and CEO of High Impact Presentations, an international consultancy providing customized training solutions that result in memorable improvements in sales performance, productivity, and talent retention. It's difficult to name a country Sue hasn't presented in. And I really, really miss travel, she says. And though Sue lives in Scottsdale, Arizona, with her six million plus miles on American Airlines, her second home was to be, right? She has written the book, literally two on sales and communication skills, power sales writing in its second printing, and has been translated into multiple languages and used globally as a Bible for email persuasion and business communication success and how to say it to sell it. It's part of a multi-million dollar award winning how to say it series and was rated as best book by Amazon. All right. I'm going to step away from the intro here and, and talk about Sue. Sue, thanks thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Good morning, Cameron. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got to say, I'm just so excited to have you here. Um, for years, I was like, all right, you know, because I've been much more on the sales side and not on the event planning side. And when I have been on the planning side, I'm like second or third uh, monkey on the team. So I don't get to make the, the shots. But if, if I would have had my way, if I was running the shot, Speaker Sue would have been a part of every single event. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell people why. Um, I remember I, I, it was like 2000, maybe 10 at a WEC. And we're in this kind of like tan, you know, khaki colored conference room with the, you know, Asian rug style thing. And Speaker Sue's coming down the middle of the aisle way talking about her New York Jewish accent as she has that New York Jewish accent. And just <laughs> the vulnerability caught me and brought me in. Um, as I'm going up to business appointments, um, I'm wiping my nose thinking of, of Speaker Sue. And that sounds funny, right? For everybody. Why are you wiping your nose thinking of Speaker Sue? She told this story during that, that event uh, about her and her mother you know, and how they would put on a professional face. So, you know, cold, if you've ever been in New York City in the in the middle of winter, the wind's going, your eyes are tearing, the nose, you know. So she would go into like a, a corner before you got into the building and blow the nose and compose themselves and walk in. And so that's been a part of my process as well. And when I, when I do that, I think of Speaker Sue. Um, it, it talks about, you know, the idea of, of being vulnerable and bringing people in and how much that impacts people. And then I got two more points and then I'm going to give the floor uh, to Speaker Sue. But uh, sales emails like that idea of, you know, we're MP MPI. And so we'd be talking about hotel folks and like, why are you talking to me about your three million renovation with the hotel kind of thing? What matters to me as the person that's buying? What are the things that are particular to my business? So don't send me that blast email that just has information that sounds impressive, but doesn't actually mean anything to the person that's reading it, you know, right next, whatever. And that had a big impact on my communications with people, make sure that it matters to people. And then the final thing, because I do have a lot of folks that are coaches and speakers uh, that come in on this program and, you know, I'm in, they're in my network. And so I, one thing I want to say for folks that are trying to do this and, and launching their own channel and, and all that, that stuff, 
one of the things that always stood out to me is the way that you came and you were so professional, so high energy. And so when you bring somebody like that into your event, it has a huge, huge, huge impact. The way that you prepared for the audience, because it wasn't like some of the other uh, speaker rooms that I was walking into where they just had their spiel and it was the same no matter what room and what country, wherever they were, you targeted to the audience. You really seemed like you cared. And I definitely walked away feeling that you've always supported me. And because of that, and because my first experience with you is with MPI, I associate the MPI Association brand, meaning Professionals International brand, with Speaker Sue. And MPI stands out in my mind better for it. So that's the power of bringing in a speaker like that because it changed my life, one, but also elevated that brand. So that's the advertisement and why people need to work with you. Um, I want um, you to sort of talk about where you are and what you're doing, and then we'll get into you know why you're so passionate and your history and why you do what you do. Okay, so thank you. So, so uh, quick answers. One, never in my life have I been introduced with a cleaning of the nose story. Um, <laughs> To say. I'm surprised we go into the story with the broccoli between my two front teeth, or even worse, the time that I presented and this button was open. I had a little uh, <laughs> it was just so close, I remember it like yesterday. And so when I looked in the mirror, which I always checked before, right, I, it looked like everything was closed. But when I would go like this, you could see, thank God, <laughs> and nobody told me. Nobody told me until the first break. Oh my god! And when, I, when and when he did come up to me, some guy came up to me when we had our break. I just looked at him and I said, "You animal!" <laughs> <laughs> I just, but you know what? It's the same thing now with these webinars that I'm doing all the time. I was I was speaking, and my three year old granddaughter, who was two and a half at the time, I didn't know that she could open up my office door. Uh, um, and neither did her pa, <laughs> my husband. And uh, all of a sudden, she just toddles right in here and she's standing right here. But you know what? Uh, we have to be authentic. And that speaks to your idea. And I thank you for that really kind, your really kind words about caring because I do care. When I give the, when I do care, I walk around every room um, and I try to do that now virtually by getting on early and being able to talk to people and chatting in and finding out stuff uh, before they're, they're speaking. We didn't do that today. You and I were, were talking. My technology had an issue. But, but really to be the host of whether it's a, a, a conversation like this or whether it's training. And so having those moments of eyeball to eyeball. The other thing is that I, my truth is that I... I'm still nervous when I speak, not so much on a webinar, but in front of all these live people. <laughs> and, and so, but if I take the time to put them at ease, I also become more at ease. So I always, I really thank you for noticing that there was a difference in energy in those programs because I wanted to speak. Even if I was speaking to 5,000, I would get around as much as I could until they made me come back and get into a green room. But that made me more confident. And I'm sure that it helped other people to be able to say, hey, you know, she's not so bad. You know, she, we, she and I laughed, a, we, had a, we had a moment, right? So, so that's that. So thank you for that introduction that um, spontaneous just led to all this rambling. But thank you for um, asking me to tell my little background. And, and I, I think that I, everyone in my family thought that I was a born seller. And I know that because I was like seven years old when my mother uh, was selling raffle tickets that, uh, for this United Order of Truth Sisters. And what they did was that they would wrap bandages for cancer patients. But if my mother sold enough raffle tickets, she would get to go to the luncheon for free. And this is a big deal. They get all dressed up, you know, that, and, <laughs> but we really couldn't afford for my mother to pay to go to that luncheon. So I was sent out at like seven, I think that was the first time I did it. And who turns, it was um, three raffle tickets for a dollar. I, I remember that three, and, and which shows you that I'm like older than the dinosaurs. But but um, I would knock on doors, uh, who really turns away a seven year old. So I my mother got to go free to her luncheon every year. She was happy, I was happy. And I think that was where I got the, the little urge. And my dad was a printer. 
and he used to print up these bumper stickers. Uh, they were now thinking back, oh my gosh, Cameron, I remember one of them saying, um, we back up, we we back up for redheads, we stop for blondes. I mean, these were <laughs> I know. I, I want to go back to the the selling like at seven years old because I think it's really interesting, you know, again, going back to like vulnerability. And so it's I, I ask people all the time for their story, and I think they like their you know, they just want to present that professional. They're like, they don't really go back to childhood. But I think that those childhood moments that sort of set us up and everybody had a childhood and everybody had these like little moments where they started to see what their personality was. So to know that, you know, that came from like selling mom's raffle tickets. You know, there's a lot of people out here selling, selling uh, Girl Scout cookies and starting their professional sales careers. And that's awesome because you either you either love it or, or you learn to love it. And that's where I was going with my dad's little printing. He would bring the excess home of these bumper stickers. And um, if we could sell them, and whether in a little place or door to door, we got to keep the nickel that we would sell it for. And so my brother and I used to go different ways and, and we would come home with I don't know, you know, a buck or or five dollars. And and so again, selling. Then I went to uh, when I went to the little little Sue Herskowitz like hustling hustling uh, bumper stickers. I was the first one with the side hustle, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> and and then um, when I was I graduated college, I had a degree in teaching, both in education and English. But I was trying to find a job, right? Which I got that summer. But what was I going to do to make money during that summer? So I signed up to sell Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, I don't know if anybody here went through this and um, they taught us sales skills, probably like IBM did in the day, but you got it like in four afternoons. You had to buy the product and then you went out. And their recommendation was, do not wait, take this information, go, do this as soon as you can. So there I am, the little salesperson, <laughs> and and so I just pulled into a neighborhood <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on the way home <clears throat> and I just started knocking on doors and like the first five people weren't interested, but the next person let me in. But here's the thing, Cameron, talk about vulnerability. They wanted to buy the Encyclopedia Britannica. They let me in. But when they offered me a cold drink of water and they opened their refrigerator, they had no food. They had like this pitcher of water and maybe... And and I'm selling them in those days. It was like three hundred dollars or something for, and then you would get yearly updates. But you know what? The library was less than a mile away, and the library would get a new set of Encyclopedia Britannica every year, not just an update. And even though these people wanted to buy it, I talked them out of it because I said how important it was to get fresh, new encyclopedias, not just that yearbook. So then I thought my sales career was over. And then, <laughs> um, but you know what? I really learned um, not to sell what you don't believe in. And um, I, that was my only day of selling Encyclopedia Britannica. And, and <laughs> well, the one day, the one day career in encyclopedia sales. <laughs> yeah. I, I lost money on that sales career. And then, <laughs> and then um, but it, I really think that that taught me something about authenticity and, and, and truly that, I know that there are people, we all do what we need to do, right? But if you don't really believe in your product, if you don't, if you don't really believe that it's going to help someone and elevate them, then uh, at least for me, I can't, I can't sell it. And, and so, so that was it. Then I went into teaching. My son was born. I do have one more story, but I, I do you want to? No, 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 no. Keep going. Oh, wow. I, I was just going to say, I, I know there's some people here that, you know, they're, you know, they need a job. And so they're, they're doing biz dev. I was talking to a guy yesterday um, who works for a company that, that hauls junk. And, and um, if he's watching uh, this later, he'll know who he is, but uh, you know, I, I could sense like, you know, he was, you know, he's there, he's trying to do a good job. He's trying to do his thing, but you know, probably not the most passionate thing uh, for him, but he wants to do a good job. So I know I'm hopeful that people that are in that position can, can figure it out because it's the relationships. If you understand you have a, a service or a product and you're selling it and you're you're going to help somebody. So you, you have that aspect of it. And then the language that you use and how you sell it and how you create those relationships 
you know, you're not going to, if you don't love it, you don't have to be in that career forever and how you touch people, right? That can have a lasting impact and lead on to other things. So I, I want people that are watching to sort of read that and, and hear that and have that in mind as they're developing their, their conversations and their emails with an eye towards the future. Yeah, huge point. It, I, I mean, there's so much you just said to unpack there because uh, it is true. Uh, and, and both you and I uh, agree that you need to believe in what you're selling, that it's going to help. Hey, and you tell that junk guy, he would be helping me amazingly. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You'd think I'm kidding. Um, but we just moved my mother into memory care. I need hello junk or where, whoever he's. But that, <laughs> Um, so, but to the other point actually is a beautiful segue into my, my, my last story about, about me. And that is that, uh, I, I started teaching and my son was born and I needed to figure out a way I wanted to see if I could afford to be at home with him. So I created this business writing program and actually I have two stories and uh, the, the first client and I was knocking on doors and essentially everybody said to me, go away, little girl. And then one day, it was at that time, Valley National Bank, which has had many iterations, Bank One, now it's Chase Bank. They hired me. And it was it was remarkable that they hired me. I went in so unprepared. Oh, my gosh. Um, so they told me there were going to be four people in the meeting. So as a good teacher, because I had previously, right, I used a, um, a flip chart and I wrote my notes on the flip chart. Well, when they ushered me into this room, I didn't think to tell them I was bringing a flip chart. And we were in this tiny little room. I had to keep the flip chart <laughs> on my lap. And, and so now I became so panicky. Oh, and the other thing was that I wasn't wearing hose. I had no stockings on. And I did not know. because, <laughs> But it was a rule at the bank. And I'm, I'm realizing that I'm making a total fool of myself that I lost. I didn't know one thing, Cameron, that I was going to say about mm-hmm. what about me and what I was going to bring to. So what I had to do was that I had to actually read my notes from the flip chart. Now, this is I'm not that big. <laughs> you know, not, there's this flip chart and I have to keep turning the pages. And as I'm doing this, I am like negotiating with the Lord. Please just let me out of here. I will never darken the door again. Just let me get through this. Right? <laughs> and they hired me. And so after about six months, I finally got up the nerve. And, and I asked her why she hired me. And she started laughing. And she said, Sue, what you lacked in professionalism, which was everything. Oh, no. <laughs> She said, you made up for an enthusiasm. She said, we weren't sure, excuse me, we weren't sure you were going to get it right the first or third time. She said, but we knew that when you did, we were going to love it. I mean, that was like, and, and to your point about networking, every single, every single job has been a result of that job in one way, shape or form. That uh, somebody there moved, brought me to another company. That company introduced me to somebody else. Somebody else introduced me to somebody else. And so to your point about, about the guy with the, with the, the junk, you, you just, it's, it's really creating those relationships. So, so to, again, to build on your point, it's believing that what you're doing is going to help some other human being, even if you aren't as passionate about it, but that it really will help somebody else. And then doing your best at yeah. that and yeah. creating that network. So, so to your point. Yeah, I'm, no, I, I think that's huge. Talk to me about, cause you've, you've had a career, you've gone all over the place. I think people that, you know, are especially, you know, trying to get into the business development aspect of sales and, you know, the entrepreneur thing where they are power players and they have a, a seat on to be uh, perpetually, you know, into the future, especially as we come out of the pandemic, right? What has been the piece? And because I, I think that ties into like how you sell yourself, how you present yourself, how you make people feel like you bring value. I, I certainly got that feeling from you, but I think a lot of people go into the room hoping to put that feeling into people. Enlighten us some of the preparation that goes into first uh, the the biz dev aspect of getting the client to begin with. And I know a lot of that is doing a good job, just what you said, you know, doing it, <laughs> rocketed and, and being, being energetic. But I think 
you've you've got something that's moved a little bit beyond that uh, than than just you know the the regular every day. And how do you prepare for the audience and make sure that you're bringing value? I know you. I don't know what the biggest room that you spoke to. I know that room when I remember back, it was a crowded, packed room. I think in in that particular conference, they ran out of room. People could not come into the room. Yeah, um, I think that there are multiple multiple, um, so thinking about from a business development standpoint, it's uh, um, really being persistent and believing in yourself. I know that sounds so cliche and I'm sorry, but that does, if you'll uh, let me, that that's that kind of lends itself to the last story. And that is at a major seminar company. I had written to a major seminar company way back when I was first starting. And because I was already doing these little workshops, um, these training programs, I had the nerve, um, my word would be chutzpah, right? Um, there are other parts of anatomy that would <laughs> suffice. Um, but I, I had the nerve to write to them and say, why are we competing? Now, now picture this, Cameron, I'm one, and they're this big company on Wall Street in New York, New York. And I wrote, why are we competing? I'm doing the same type of business writing workshops as you. Why don't we work together? And by the way, I wouldn't use the word work anymore. I'd use the word collaborate. So remind me to come back to that. Uh, um, and I didn't hear from them. I didn't hear from them. And one day I get a phone call and it's this company. And she says to me, um, we're interested. We need a, someone to do business writing and we're interested in meeting you. Um, why don't you come here for an interview? And I'm in Arizona at this point and I'm saying, I would love to. I'm in Arizona. She said, yes, well, um, when you're in the neighborhood. Well, not. it's not that close, right? <laughs> I called my dad, I hung up and I called my dad and I said, dad, I need to borrow money. I need to fly into New York and, you know, visit family and say that I'm in the neighborhood. And he said to me, and I actually thought he ruined my life. So I'm just giving you the spoiler alert, but <laughs> you know, honey, he said, I have run a very small printing company. He said, but if I wanted to bring in a printer, I would be paying the airfare. I would put them up in a hotel. He said, swankiest, that was his word. He said, it may not be the swankiest, he said, but they would have everything taken care of. And the fact that they aren't doing that, I'm not sure how really interested they are. Mm. And so I, I, I called them back and I said, I wasn't going to be in the neighborhood. And she said, okay, thank you. And she hung up. And I think I cried for two days and was so angry at my dad. And about two weeks later, she called me back. Mm. She said, We'd like you to look at your calendar and when you're available, we would like you to come, we would like to pay your expenses to come to New York. And I have no idea where this came from, Cameron, but when she said, I'd like you to look at your calendar, well, I could, it was completely blank. It was a hundred percent open, but somehow, somehow I said, uh, okay, thank you. I will check my calendar and get back to you. And I did, mm -hmm. and they paid and they, they hired me too. So um, it's good. It's so, it's so timely that you, you tell that story. We I'm in this uh, uh, networking group called master networks. And yeah. so the tidbit this week and been on a different couple of calls and it said, you know, sometimes you need to say no. And I think that's a perfect example of when to say no. Here's somebody saying, you know, come all the way over here, no guarantee, no, no, whatever. And I know that I've also heard like other kinds of stories where like I went, I spent my last dime and, you know, not, not to say that it can't work out, but you got to make the decision. You got to make the call and see if they're worth, you know, it's worth it or not. But that's a great situation where people can sort of pinpoint and say no. And sometimes that, that rarity, right? Like I'm telling you, I'm not that available that puts another level of value in somebody's mind and right. sort of piques interest even more. Um, that that allure of of not being <laughs> necessarily available, right? And uh, Linda Ray says no to say no, right? I, I love that. And she was saying before, which I think is a nice little entry point to conversation: selling and presenting are there 
any other two things that more people are afraid of, right? Yeah, probably not. You're right. That was a, that's a great point. Um, yes, because everyone says don't take it personally. Well, hell, it is personal. Right. <laughs> You're saying no to me, right? And that actually is why so many people hide behind their email instead of actually getting on the phone or having something like this happening. We hide behind email, and when the emails aren't well written, when they're not strategic, we're not getting the result we want, and that feeds. That rejection but if i could just go back to one point see yeah. i didn't i didn't know my value i really didn't know um and my father was trying to show me that i had more value even though he had no clue what i really wanted to do he didn't want me to sell myself out he didn't want me to sabotage myself and i so to what you're saying cameron i think that that's really important because we do we get desperate you know, right now, uh, as you kindly introduced me, I, I flew all over the world all the time. And no, no, that's not happened um, since February. Uh, my next date that I have, my actual travel date is November of next year. My first, so so um, it's really though appreciating who you are and remembering that you still have value, no matter how lonely or lonesome or desperate you might be feeling it's not giving up on really who you are and as i said i was i was bitterly angry at my father because i thought he just didn't understand and he was so old and that was what he was talking about wasn't true well it was and, mm. and so yeah so I, I that was a little heavy but but i really am hopeful that so many people who are now really feeling desperate that we can't let that guide us and and also to your point i keep getting people who are asking me well what about applications and this is an aside i'll just do this quick but what about applications that are requiring this and this uh one specifically said they want a four-year degree and i don't have a four-year degree but i have 21 years of sales experience blah 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 w apply anyway apply anyway and then make your cover letter should focus on the skills and what you're bringing i mean these these companies are now having perfect wish lists they want everything right and and that you walk on water too well nobody is going to be that perfect candidate so why can't it be you it should be you and that's whether you're applying for a job corporate or you're bringing your own self to your own business development so really focus on what you do have, on what you can bring, not what you can't. And that's true with selling. It's always focusing on what you have. There's always, or almost always, there's going to be something shinier or newer or, or something in some way better for, for your prospect. But it's what you bring and how you bring it that creates all that, all that difference. So I could just ramble on, Cameron. You want to come with another question? <laughs> No, I, I was, I'm just uh, putting this up. So yesterday, uh, Yolanda posted, uh, and I know that you recently did an event with her, and she was just saying some really complimentary uh, yeah. stuff that speakers who humanizes our sales process. She's super creative and motivated, motivated by the heart. So it's always fresh, and I, I definitely agree with that statement. Um, I'm going to be s super selfish because um, I'm hoping that people were are going to. Uh, jump in the chats and and people, if you're watching this later, please send your questions. Uh, Sue is not the type of person to ignore you, so we'll we'll get that that content to you. But uh, for folks that are watching now, I'd love you to ask the questions, put the questions, the comments more specific, better, so we can really help you. I'm going to ask you something that's specific to me because I have a Biz Dev Live networking event that I'm doing every Tuesday. So I'm promoting in a couple of different ways. I've created a calendar. Uh, I'm sending out, you know, posts on social media. Uh, I probably, let me not say probably, I should be sending some emails to people directly inviting them. I feel like the more heavy I come on, the more strong where I say, hey, this is something that's really valuable to you. You know, this is something that you'll, you'll definitely get some, the heavier I come on that way, I think the further people retreat from me. So what is your suggestion if you're doing something and it's free, right? And, and there's a challenge there too, which I think is important to dive into because when you offer something for free, 
do is, is are people assigning a value to it, right? So is it the best option to go free? My idea with BizDev Live Network and be completely vulnerable is I want to build it up and and uh, don't don't have a paywall so that people can really get in there. We can fill up the thing, and then at one point when I have the problem that you know we got too many people and I don't have enough Zoom uh, bandwidth with with my plan, then you know we'll talk about you know putting up some sort of paywall or doing some di additional event for, for more contact, but I'm just about building up the brand. So what should my pitch be? What should my, my entryway into people be right now? Yeah. And that, that truly, you know, I tell people when I'm teaching presentation skills, don't be saying all the time, that's a great question. That's a good question. Cause not every question is that great. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's, it's, but, but that was a great question. And um, my answer is going to be, it has to be authentic and it has to be about them. So us telling them that it's going to be extraordinary, nobody believes that because everybody's saying it. And then, and what people are doing, what you have done, for instance, just for my, the this uh, business dev program, you've been personable, you've been authentic, you've, you've used, um, different, this is minor, but it matters. You use different type of capitalization and smaller words, and you've just been normal. You've been personable. You've been authentic. You've talked about what matters to them. So you haven't said, um, this is going to be, you know, or anything like that. You've told the the listeners what they will gain from this. And, and that specificity, did I say that right? Um, that, that precision, really will make a difference. So what, in writing a great email, it comes down to a writing great social uh, media uh, texting is, is about making sure that it's truly relevant to them and not just what we're thinking because that will always be heavy handed. So it's, it's you know, when you were asking me, Cameron, about some of the key points here, um, one of my one of my key points, if we're talking about email and and selling and and being at your best, is really to be sure that I, I just started thinking to help them feel something. If yeah. they feel something, then you're not going to be as successful as you could have been. And the question is, you know, in those emails that you were that um, maybe you thought of, but I know you better. You didn't actually write. Um, they. It's not you telling me, it's helping me to feel the excitement, delight, curiosity. And your postings for this uh, uh, conversation really did that. And that's what I recommend you doing in email as well, that there needs to be uh, some emotional resonance. And we know that's even more important now than ever, creating a level of emotional certainty. If people don't feel cared about, there's no reason they can get information anywhere, but if they really feel your care and they do the way that you you've been writing, they do. So you know, I try I try to within the program. I find it easier when I'm talking to people that I can really deep dive. Yesterday I spent time. I, I jumped into a chat. I, I went around, made sure that I was serving this thing, and and it gets into this whole thing. Well, that's time consuming, and so it tends to take away. From my ability to attract or or touch more people, and I'm working on my systems and processes. So I I, I guess I'm trying to balance that because I knew I I knew you were going to say because that's 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 what you've taught me is that you want to hit people in their heart, you want to bring that strategic value. So I guess I'm trying to balance out like I could go <laughs> really deep in with one person or two people or three people. But how do I do this in a way where I'm a little bit more strategic with my time and doing something that is more compelling sales language wise in terms of designing a template that and, and I'm thinking through it now and I'm thinking maybe I'm writing notes. I'm writing notes. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking through it as I'm going through is, you know, maybe just doing a different starting line for everybody. I mean, I do that a little bit with my Calendly invites, you know, but, you know, just just saying one line that is personal to that person because I have gotten to know so many people. The, the great thing about the pandemic, we may not be flying like we used to and all that, but the ability to meet with people over Zoom, I've met 
more people over the last eight months than I probably met over the last three, four yeah. years, uh, which is which is incredible. So there's a huge opportunity for those that want it. So I, that's that's sort of my question in a nutshell, just how how to be strategic, um, not focus all my time on, on one person. And then, you know, I don't even know if that one person because of scheduling, whatever they got going on in their life or three people or four people, uh, I'm trying to go for that mass audience. It's a networking program. So the, it, the power of that is amplified when there's more people in those rooms and more people to meet. I think I host a good meeting, um, but how do yeah. I get that across to people and make sure they, understand that from a email or post perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I do want to say that you do. Um, I was fortunate enough that you one and I yeah, yeah. speak at one and um, it was the action, the energy, uh, and you lead that, you lead that, you model that. And that was awesome. Um, and going back to email. And so I was taking notes while you were speaking. I didn't want you to think I was checking my phone. Um, so, <laughs> so the, the idea of personalization is key. You know, personalization has always been huge. I, for years, I've been joking that I spent $3.95 on a bottle of Coke, uh, Coca-Cola because it had my son's name on it. And he was a, an, an adult, right? But, but and, and then right here, the same bottle was 98 cents. But so why did I allow myself knowingly to get ripped off because of that personalization? And now it's even more important. But to your point, um, you don't, uh, you don't, a deep dive isn't needed for everyone. But truly saying something that is authentic and not uh, stalkerish or, um, <laughs> you know, that it's like really, uh, how, yeah. I saw you on this site and I saw you doing that. And so I know that you like this and right. Yeah, uh, yeah that's just disgusting. And I don't want to have anything to do with you and probably I'll unfollow you. Yes. But the other thing is not doing anything really cheesy. Like I have seen and uh, really, uh, though I am a sales trainer and communications researcher, I'm really just a salesperson, right? And so, and I didn't mean to say just, I am a salesperson. So I see sellers like us writing to CEOs and saying, I was really impressed with your article that you posted, blah, blah, blah. And okay, no offense, but do you think that CEO actually cares that you were impressed? But what was it about her article that impressed you? What was it that you're, that when you read, it opened your eyes? So to use a word like uh, impressed when you're writing to someone, that does nothing. In fact, that probably is, is a bit of a turnoff. They might be flattered. And, but, but I'm going to highly suggest that you go for something with much more significance. And that is to read the darn article. That's number one, to read that post and to, Find something about that post. And yes, you're right. It, that will take time to actually read, but you may learn something that's going to change your life too. The other thing is uh, my theory has always been, it's not throwing so much against the wall and hopeful that something will stick. It's really taking your top 10, your top 50, your top 150 prospects and clients and zoning in on them and making sure that they feel cared about and then uh, uh, going more thoroughly into those those types of relationships. So personalization is key, um, as you're saying, but not to go overboard. And it, uh, you're going to be sick of my saying using the word authentic. But if it isn't authentic and if it isn't respectful, you shouldn't be using it all. The other thing you talked about were, were the words that you should use. And, and that reminded me, I wanted to come back to why I wouldn't say work with. So uh, January of 2019, and this is like the oldest research that I use because um, that might as well be 900 years ago now with everything. <laughs> right? but, but I do believe that this research is, is still true. Stanford I did uh, Stanford University in the U.S. did the fMRI studies, and they found that there are some words that actually stimulate negative portions of our brain. 
uh, so the, those those words and that messaging is memorable, but not in the way that's going to help us to develop business. And then some words, you know, that expression it goes in one ear and out the other. They they really do. We don't even pay attention to them. They're like non-existent. And then there are words that light up the positive portion of our brain. And work is not a positive word, um, though I love to work. I love to work. Um, they call it, like a friend says, they call it work for a reason. And so what we want to do is use more emotionally pleasing words. So within the within the, the personalization is one key, but the, an, another enhancement is to be sure that you're using the right words. I mean, I see these emails that they are personalized, but there's no next step. If there is a next step, it's not easy. It's all about the, the buyer. Uh, um, uh, excuse me, it's all about the sender rather than the buyer. So we need to really be cautious about the words that we're using. And um, so so work is one of them. Um, contract is another. Contract is really a very threatening word. It requires commitment. So we can have an agreement and we never ask anyone to sign the agreement, uh, let alone sign the contract. What we need to do is have them approve it. Now, if you're working with someone who isn't um, familiar with agreements or whatever, whoever that might be, you can use the word signed in the past tense, as in once the signed agreement is received. That's fine. That That's one of the- I, I love this because this is super like, straight up strategic thing. Maybe you got to have somebody sign something. Maybe you work for New York Life. Maybe you work for whatever you know organization. So this is super specific information. I'm going to highlight this detail because people are having to send these emails as a function of their job, especially anybody on the financial side of things, right? It all requires a, a sign. So giving that kind of thing of like this little difference and how you say it, right. sell it. I love it. Right, right. And even a word like feedback. Feedback, that's that noise that we get, you know, from a microphone. That, and we don't even realize because we use these words. That's the thing. Email is like the least sexy thing on the planet, but it can be so strategic. It can really change everything about the results that you receive. So instead of feedback, you say comment or comments or insights, or people begin emails with, uh, so this is um, that you've had some sort of communication and um, uh, you've start off with something like, thank you for the, uh, uh, the speaking to me today or something. It wasn't that. What insights did they bring? Thank you for your insights. Thank you for um, helping me to feel like a part of your organization. Um, thank you for your time time, even though we have more of it now, or it seems like we should have more of it. Time is so valuable. So thank you for your time and insights today. And then build on that. Um, so there are so many different things. And you've heard me say this, Cameron, for years. But I think it's because there are words. And, and I do, am I allowed to say this? I do have um, a couple of job aids that I could send. Uh, um, so I I don't know how you want to handle that. But but, yeah, um, we, but what I think will be good is we'll post this up and then I think there'll be a lot of comments on it afterwards. So we'll, we'll we can definitely uh, get some links and, and share it out in there. And okay. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you keep going right. because I think that the the advice is important. I'm gonna lay up that I have a message from somebody that was trying to connect with me on LinkedIn. So we're gonna read it together and we're gonna okay. and so so people okay. that are trying okay. to uh, okay. connections will will okay. look at it. So okay. do you want to jump into that now or you want to keep going? Well, I just want to finish that one one yes, point. Please. I think it's no, though it's it, this is not new news. It is um, something that's a bigger point. So, like hoteliers will use the word property to discuss their hotel and property. We need to, we really need to be strategic in our thinking. Is property property a word that envisions success? Is property and it doesn't matter. Like to your point, you could be New York Life, you could be um, a, a data robot, you could be Discover Puerto Rico, Yolanda, you could be you could be anyone. What are the words that you're using creating any sort of emotional resonance? Do they? feel anything. So instead of property, it's resort or it's hotel, it's venue, it's destination. But we really, we have to stop just being 
robotic about the words that we're using because they really do make uh, make a difference in their receptivity and that's what's key so okay let's go on i can we can come back to this but let's go on i have my glasses on i'm ready to read <laughs> here we go all right this is it all right live show let's see if this works here we go all right so I'll read it to you because I, I know it's probably small for anybody that's that's trying to read it on their screen here. Yeah. Hello, Cameron. Employee engagement is and always has been a concern to me. Is it for you? Question mark. Okay, I'm going to throw up already. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Highly engaged employees are 30% more productive and turnover drops to the floor, period. Next paragraph. We have been connected for a bit, but never truly had the opportunity to speak. In this time of change and transformation, it may be the, well, and, and that isn't even in there, right? It may the perfect opportunity now. It has been my mission to serve and support CEOs and business leaders like you, especially in critical times like this. The alignment of people and business strategy is more than ever a pathway to success and requires attention. Next sentence, skip a line. I would imagine you're curious, and if so, may I send you an additional resource, question mark. I look forward to our dialogue, person's name who will remain nameless. Uh, I'll definitely give him a hard time and send this to him afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the first thing I'm going to say is, what about everybody who's on this call? I mean, what would you change about this email? Can you put that back up, Cameron? Absolutely. Is that okay, thanks. Um, so what what when you read it really um, annoys you or feels cheesy or doesn't seem complete or isn't truly personalized or um, just doesn't bring any sort of excitement uh, to you. So if anyone has comments about this, I would really love to see what what your thinking is. Uh, you've already heard me comment that, so you know that I don't like it, but some of you may. And um, I would love to know what it is that you're thinking so that we could, uh, um, we could make this even more practical. I will start. I know that it takes a little time to process your questions and and then type them in, but it would really be, and what would you rate this? If you were gonna rank this, again, this may not be fair because I've already told you my, my throw up scale on this, but, <laughs> but what about you? I mean, if I hadn't said that, what would be, what would you be likely to? Well, to well it's interesting because I use this and I, I sort of brought it up uh, in this conversation of somebody was talking about who he doesn't connect with. And I actually gave this guy a shot. I said, yes, I connect with him. I actually didn't respond to the thing. So if I, if somebody connects with me in an honest way, I, I respond, I try to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, but I was afraid of this guy. I wasn't going to give him the opportunity to get in my calendar. Now, wow. since then, he's been awesome. He's somebody that attends the Biz Dev Live networking things. And so that was my my sort of piece of like, just because somebody doesn't necessarily know how to communicate with me doesn't mean they're necessarily a horrible person. I was listening to uh, a podcast with Obama on it this morning, and his point was people with opposing views can certainly have redeeming qualities, right? So, you know, I think leadership is, is all about that, understanding that you don't necessarily discount somebody. Going back to your flip chart story, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it all about that. You get it sometimes, right? <laughs> yes, and and uh, more credit to you, Cameron. That um, and I love what you said that that it, we can disagree, right? And we can see uh, flaws, but we can still move forward. But will our prospects give us that opportunity? Not everybody is as kind, nor has time or inclination to do what you're doing. But once again, if you wouldn't mind putting that back up for a moment, Absolutely. I, I want to talk about a couple of points that, that might help everybody. So um, the beginning, uh, the hello, even the hello Cameron, Cameron is a little bit over the top. Um, hi is much more natural. You could go ahead and use hello. But to start off with employee engagement, where is this coming from? I'm, I'm busy, even if I'm just busy with my three-year-old grandkid, I'm busy. And you're starting off with employee engagement is and always has been. Well, and who cares if it's a concern to you? Right. So um, highly engaged employees. This is a lovely statistic, but it is meaningless just coming out of the blue. In this <laughs> way. 
I mean, just it makes no sense whatsoever. How are you piquing my interest? Uh, um, what is it that I need to know? And by the way, that phrase and turnover drops to the floor. I'm thinking about um, what's that song? There's a a, a song where you drop to the floor. <laughs> yeah, and ears then, hang low and the day goes to the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that was the first thing that I thought about. So I was out of the out of the picture anyway with that one. And then um, we've connected for a bit. Okay, when was that? And this is feeling really cheesy to me, really inauthentic. But I because you maybe have connected that. That's the way I would have started. And it, maybe it would have been something like a while ago or um, last January. And then maybe for me, because we want to put our personalities in there, I might be writing, so nine billion years ago or something you and I connected or you and I had a, a, a whatever it was. But speak your truth, right? And then get rid of this uh, um, stuff that's in this time of change and change transformation. Stop the drama. It's enough. I mean, we actually do have good news right now, right? But, and going forward, we hope it's going well, to be I think, You know, you're getting into like the bottom of it. And obviously I read the whole thing, but for me, like I, you stop reading, I think in, after Absolutely. employee engagement, right? Like I don't even get to the rest of it. You know, like the rest of it is ridiculous. I would imagine you're curious. And if so, may I send you an additional resource? Like you're you're asking me, and I think one of the things, and I and I should have put up like some of my um my actual ways that I actually because I'm getting a lot of connection requests and like how do I handle it? And I'm sending out connection requests. I'll have to talk it out, and I know that's not as illustrative as as it being written out, uh, but I don't have it prepared. Shame on me. All right. So what I do when I connect with somebody is I say. Hello, Sue. I connected with you at the WEC conference. I thought you were amazing, and I want to stay collect connected you. with you. And I and I, you know, look forward to collaborating with you in the future. Period. That's my initial statement. I don't ask for anything, uh, you know, other than the connection request. I'm just saying, hey, I want to be connected with you. And then it's yeah. on them whether they they connect or not. So I don't I don't know if you want me to stop there and and or if you want me to continue. Uh, yeah, let's stop there just for a moment because uh, um, for me, and this is may not be exactly how you wrote it anyway, but what I heard you say was I connected with you. So where is the emphasis, Cameron? It's on that I connected with you. So in this case, it would be we connected or you and I connected at the WEC and uh, um, collaborated. We, we were in the event together. Yeah, and it's about them rather than that I connected with you because mm. everything always comes back to us, right? So, so we want to move. I'm, I'm, that. Writing, I'm writing that down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the fact that that you said I would. How did you say about I want the I would like to collaborate with you? Um, so, uh, yes, I mean that is the truth. And so, because it's the truth, you can use it. But is there a way that you can fashion it that would be more um, not salesy or whatsoever? You're really smart in that. But um, maybe maybe honored, and I'd be honored. So rather than I'd like to collaborate, I'd be honored to um, collaborate with you uh, to connect. And collaborate is a good word, but connect is a really Collaborate replaces the word work, but connect is a really powerful word. I mean, really, if we just if we just breathe on it, you know, the word connect or um, it's so much more powerful than other words. It's just a really. And so I, I'd be honored. So, yes, it's about me. But why? Or I'd be thrilled or I'd be delighted or um, you'd make my day. So that makes it about them. Right. You'd make my day if you'd agree to um, uh, uh, connect here. So, because as soon as you use the word collaborate in the, that initial LinkedIn request, that they do think of work. Mm -hmm. And so they do think of, and, and there are going to be some people for you, Cameron, in particular, that will be absolutely thrilled that you're trying to connect with them to collaborate, right? I mean, that's how I'm thinking of it when I'm writing it, is that it is complimentary, that it's saying, hey, it would it would be great to collaborate with you, and I think that's a, a beneficial thing. But I understand also the point that you're sort of bringing up is that I'm throwing a transactional piece into a what otherwise should be a welcoming, connecting statement. And I love the words that you just used, emotionally pleasing words that you just used. Yes. Um, and again, it goes back to that, excuse me, uh, my almond butter from this morning. 
<laughs> Excuse me. Um, there it goes. There's my nose again. But we've come full circle. Um, <laughs> so, so um, if you goes back to that that story earlier about writing to the CEO, right? So, and saying that I'm impressed by your post. If you're writing to a CEO, collaborating probably wouldn't be the right word. Um, being honored to be connected would be correct. Mm -hmm. If you're writing, when you're writing to me um, or others, then absolutely, I'm thinking, wow, Cameron wants to collaborate with me. And I love that because I think so many people, and I, this is my story. So for years, and not necessarily in in, in your meeting room, but in so many others, you get told you are who you surround yourself with. You need to, you know, surround yourself with a, you know, team of advisors or a group of advisors, people that are doing things above and beyond. And for me, I was a little lost getting that advice because I was like, well, okay, that's all well and good, but I, I don't, I don't really, I don't have that at home. I'm not interested. Like, I don't, I don't have these people. I don't have a choice between you know, A and B, I just have A over here and that's, that's it. I don't have a B choice. Right. But this idea that I can reach out on LinkedIn, I mean, we, we're living literally, you know, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I have this message that I think it's positive. I think it's important for people to understand. We, we live in the best time ever period, ever period, ever for like connecting and promoting and reaching out and the ability to share your message. Like it's just, it's just crazy. So this idea that, you can use this kind of of language to connect with a CEO or somebody that is somebody out in the world um, that you would really like to be involved with and somebody that you would love to connect with and engage with and actually have conversation with so that you could learn from them and you could provide any resource uh, that you have in, at your disposal to help them on their journey. Yes. And, and again, really, really to drive home what you're saying, it is about them. It's not so much about what I would love. It's really about uh, um, being honored. Uh, again, thinking about brain friendly messaging and, and creating emotional resonance. It's really about being honored to have that connection. Mm. And then once you have that connection, then you can slowly and slowly is key really think about a turtle and think about a turtle on its back maybe um because we really need to go slow today um but but to slowly move into the idea of how what you can do to collaborate and make them better um, and uh, and and for me that would be articles and not necessarily post that i'm posting every friday but posting something that you have that would be of interest to them without any of course any sort of sales just thought because too many people only uh, uh, connect prospects with what they're doing and mm -hmm. No, that's not someone that today is going to bring uh, added value. So you know, I think one of the things that's been really big, especially on LinkedIn, because I mean, uh, LinkedIn is a great place for organic growth is, you know, if there's somebody doing something, I was, I was just on a live uh, before we came on this morning. And it was a lady that um, was a part of a live presentation that I'd done with Steve Spiro on Friday. And she's a realtor. And so I noticed that she works for the same company that somebody in my networking group. And I was like, well, uh, you know, if these guys aren't already connected. They don't know each other. Um, let me make sure because I don't know. And right. so I was just thinking purely in the moment, you know, maybe they, they absolutely know each other. But I was like, hey, I know this person. I'm drawing a connection. Let me not assume that that it's there. And so I said hello. And at the very least, it's like a hello and I'm thinking of you at the very, at the very worst is like, of course I know this, this person, right? Like that's, the, that's going to be their reaction. I want to move on. Cause I think in my, in my request, I think I'll, I'll improve. Like I'll, I'll, I've used this, this honored strategy. Cause I think that'll work um, to get a faster or more, you know, percentage in terms of replies as people connect with me or, you know, they're, they're sending me connection requests that, you know, I was at this event with you, a nice, a nice properly personalized, yeah. nice request, right? Or uh, they're saying yes to the request that I sent them. I then follow that up with, hey, so-and-so, um, thank you for connecting. And then I have this little phrase, it's, it really is wonderful when we have a chance to really learn about each other so that we can understand each other's 
and I'm losing the wording now because I didn't properly prepare, but to, each, to understand each other, what we care about and, and you know, what's going on in our world for future collaboration, something along those lines. Uh, and then I give them like my one-on-one -on -one appointment maker and that's been very successful. Um, and I wonder if in terms of, for folks, what you think, you know, whether it's a hotelier, somebody that's selling a product service, because I'm not selling anything. And I know, you know, if you're working for a company, maybe, you know, just filling up your calendar with these touchy feely one on one bonding sessions just to learn each about each other, which is what I'm doing. Um, maybe that's not good enough for your sales director. So how would you word something where there's actually, you know, a sale is the next step, or maybe it's the second or third step. I have like this two-step process where, all right, we, we figure out the connection. Once there's a connection, now I'm, I'm lining you up to actually meet with me one-on-one -on -one just so I can get to know a little bit more about you and tell you my story. Right. So the first thing I'm going to say is if it's working for you, you keep doing it. Um, you are in, of course, I don't know uh, everyone who's who's listening, watching us right now. Uh, I, I really do believe, Cameron, that you're in a unique position in that people are, people are truly honored to be connected because you can elevate them. You can, you can feature them. You can, it's not like selling hotel space or a destination. It is, it is a little or, different, yes. <laughs> or, um, like where, where there are a million competitors and everyone is trying to do the same thing. So my first point is that you should continue doing what you're doing. I, I would highly recommend when people have something different from what you're offering that they slow down that they not go, I took notes again with my little pen here. <laughs> um, so you're going to uh, the appointment in the second connection. Uh, I think that for most people, that will be uh, a significant turnoff. You haven't cultivated the relationship. You haven't brought value. See, you bring value. You bring value because of what you do. But um, if I'm trying to sell this mug because having mugs from different countries makes people's day more productive. I don't know. Um, if, if I'm trying to do that, I, I need to talk about productivity with them first. I need to talk to them about how talent retention I need to. Um, right, so let's, let's go at it from this because I am definitely developing a mug and a shirt. All right. So if, I'm saying this, I'm going to make this commitment to figure this out. And it's the, the shirt and the mug, it's going to say, you're on mute. Okay? <laughs> All right. So this, uh, so I have started up the Brilliant. you're on mute company. And now my goal is to uh, talk to uh, stores around the country that could potentially carry my you're on mute cup in their store They've connected with me. I, I I reached out. I attended a networking event. I was I I got in, comfortable in the chat with them on something. I I connected with them. They've connected with me. So now we're into that that second uh, connection phase, oh, right? I stop you. Notice what you've done, though. You're not going from hi. I'd be honored to connect with you to here's my calendar link. You're not, you're, you are adding value by being in that chat, by doing the network. So, so your second step was absolutely creating a trusting relationship with them. Mm -hmm. and now we're moving forward. So I need everyone listening to that, that you didn't go from, I have a connection to here's my mug. Mm. Right? So, right. so we were developing that we've connected on LinkedIn. Now I want to follow up because I want the sale. So right. what's my next step here? Well, I really have to ask you what your sales process is. Um, and what do you want the next step? Do you want them? Uh, do you want them to place an order right there and then? Are oh they yeah, I want I want them to buy a hundred of my you're on mute uh, cups for their store. Okay, and so some people probably would be able to do that just because the idea is intriguing to them. Uh, um, so I would create curiosity and a form 
and I would be sending that. But more than anything, I would probably get them on a on the Zoom and talk them. And I would be holding it up. This is a prog cup, sorry, but I would just be <laughs> holding it up, right? And 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 that in itself would be a an icebreaker. They'd be laughing, right? Well, from there, I mean, I love that idea, and nobody here better steal that from him because you. Oh no, please, you guys are. You can have that all day. You're no. on you. I'm I'm sharing my screen. Um, uh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, you know, like like the the uh, Zoom bingo, right? You know, I'm sorry, my camera doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> I can't figure out my microphone. <laughs> Brilliant. It's brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh All my right. God. Can you imagine? But Cameron, I'm sorry. Can you imagine you could sell that to every one of us so that it could say uh, when I'm on something like this and somebody tries to chat in, uh, um, I could hold this up and they don't feel so foolish, right? <laughs> I mean, I love that. And you're just sitting there holding it up, and they're like, they're talking. I've seen it happen, right? They're talking, they're talking. The people are like, <laughs> they're talking, they're talking. Somebody finally has to unmute themselves. I so, think you need a whole set. You're on mute. I know, but I think you need a whole set so that I could have like a whole set here. And I could hold, I could do one that's a thumbs up and I could do a one that is, you are awesome. I, I, um, I love this idea. <laughs> All right. So, so we, we are, we have, we've gone, we've gone an hour plus here and I, I'm, I so value your time. I, and just, I, I just want to add one more thing oh, to yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. And that is, um, make the next step easy you know, whatever, if you're selling your mugs or your whatever, um, if that next step isn't easy, mm -hmm. um, they're not going to take it. We really go to the, the, and particularly now we want to be sure that we're making that everything frictionless, frictionless, make it easy so that they can take that next step seamlessly for you. Okay. Sorry. No, I love that. And, and it's so important because I'm in meetings with people and they're like, Oh, attend my event. And then, okay, where's the link? Where, uh, you know, you'll get you'll get a message on LinkedIn. You know, buy. You know, th this is my book. Where's Where's the link? Okay. And, and, yes, and where's the proposal? You're following up on the proposal you sent me, but you make me go back and look for it. Oh. Where's your, right? Oh, where's your phone number? Where's in the signature line? You think I've mem I don't memorize my son's phone number, let alone yours. But you think I'm gonna pop open? All right, now now you've opened the can of worms. All okay. Right? So. You put together a fabulous website, Company X, right? It's amazing. Looks like you have a big team. Looks super professional. You got the corporate IBM Blue. It's amazing. You got an amazing contact page. They can put their number in. They can fill out a form. But nowhere on your website is your name. Right. Nowhere on the website is a phone number where I can get a hold of you. Nowhere on the website is an email. There's no personal, there's no about you page. There's nothing that says this belongs to Cameron Toth or Speaker Sue. Right. What are the, my, my huge pet peeves right along with, they have a website, uh, but it's still your, you know, my company at gmail.com. Okay, so so there's an Italian restaurant uh, uh, that we order pizza from. Uh, you you have to go through four screens before you get to their phone number. Four <laughs> screens. All I want to do is order my pizza. My husband's on the way to get it, and I'm clicking on the screen. So we're, on all different levels, that's happening. You've made an excellent point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's tricky things to the sales process. How do you warm people up? How do you get... but why you know so many times i think part of the big sales conversation is just people getting out of their own way you know i had somebody the other day and i was talking to her and she, you know getting the renter's insurance and everything and she said well i you know really want to look at the the car insurance and then and going and going and going you had me at saving me money on the car insurance i why are you right. why are we going just make it easy right. make it short make it simple i, I think when people when you're providing value, people will make you a priority, but still that means that you need to value their time. And so make it easy for them and, and the sales will go a lot smoother. Uh, and to that point, um, your LinkedIn address is down below in the YouTube uh, over on uh, the right or left on Facebook so people can find you. Uh, but I want to make sure uh, that people know what you're looking to do, what people hire you for and what kind of people you're looking to connect with? Well, thank you so much. So you know how people use email, like what we've been talking about the whole time, use email, um, just 
to transact. What I do is help people to use email internally and externally to build relationships, to build trust, and to use brain-friendly messaging that really does help them to extend their hand and elevate the conversation. And though, though my market has primarily been hospitality and luxury hospitality, you can imagine that that's not what's happening right this moment. I am trying to move more into the farmer market now because um, internally they really don't know how to communicate and um, sales leaders are not helping sellers, drug reps to do what they could be doing at their best. And, uh, physicians who had not pre-pandemic been uh, influenced by email now are very comfortable using virtual and digital. And so th there's a huge market where I really think that we could be saving more lives, uh, that drug reps could really be connecting with uh, physicians in a whole different way. But what I do overall is really to help people to communicate more authentically and more persuasively so that they can gain better results and help the other human being too, too. And that's it, sue at speakersue.com is my email and the websites. Yeah, you can you can Google at Speaker Sue and all her stuff is gonna come up. You've heard from me, Speaker Sue is fabulous. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to wave goodbye to everybody and we'll go yeah. into the business. <laughs> Thank you. Because I, I have to do that. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Dev live, live weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz Dev Live, live weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz D with C, C. brought to you by Cameron T. T. Biz D with C. C, brought to you by Cameron T. T. This is business development, not even selling it. This is intelligent. If you watch it, I promise you benefit. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Leadership and motivation, empathy and inspiration. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz Dev Live, live. weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Biz D with C, C. brought to you by Cameron T.